Well, this is our, uh, I think it's our sixth, number six uh, in our series, Supernatural Protection. And first, uh, first Sunday, we talked about, you know, Psalm 91, finding the secret place of the Most High, making Him your habitation, provides you a level of protection if you have a covenant with God. The following Sunday, we preached on the armor of God and the need to put our armor on every day. Uh, of course, from there, uh, we went to the, you know, the Easter ceremony, beginning with Palm Sunday, uh, through Good Friday and to the resurrection. That covered two Sundays, talking about the foundation of your supernatural protection today in your covenant being the power of the resurrection. Last Sunday, we started looking at uh, angels and the place they play in the unfolding plan of God for your life, and protection is a big part of their ministry to you. We're going to continue today with, with angels and probably will remain here for at least another Sunday, maybe a couple more after this. We'll just see how it goes. But well, why don't you open your Bibles to... Um, Hebrews chapter 1, and we'll begin reading in verse 13. Hebrews 1, 13. But which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? This is the truth of the word that deals with the unseen realm. And it is a, a realm that we have to receive by faith, obviously. We can't naturally see into that realm unless the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, the discerning of spirits, should operate. And it does from time to time in some people's lives. They get a glimpse of angels, demons, you know, uh, heaven perhaps, anything that is a part of that unseen realm. Otherwise, we have to take it by faith and angels inhabit that realm. So you have to come to a decision early on in our discussion of angels uh, that you're going to believe what the Bible says about the unseen realm and therefore angels who have a big role in it. And as we just read, part of that role is to minister to them who are the heirs of salvation. And that's anybody that's been born again. And they're here to minister to you. That's uh, something that should just, you know, blow a person away when you think about it for a moment. Angels are available to you, if you have a covenant with God, to minister to you. And he says in chapter 2, verse 1, Continuing this line of thought, therefore, since they are to be ministering to you, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. There are a lot of things that we let slip away from our grasp by not being attentive to it, and the ministry of angels is one of them. I mean, there are a lot of interesting things in the Bible and a lot of challenges in this natural life. So sometimes we have to deliberately be sure the truth about angelic protection hadn't slipped away from us. And verse 2 says, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? A rhetorical question, how shall we escape? Well, you don't want to escape something that's good. You don't want to escape something that is a blessing. Now, you want to escape the death and the cursing that's in this earth. And it says, how shall we escape? The answer that's implied is you won't. If you neglect so great a salvation, as is available to you through the ministry of angels. This isn't a reference to the salvation 
or a direct reference at any rate to the salvation that is ours in Jesus Christ when we're born again. The context we just established is the ministry of angels to the heirs of salvation. And if you take earnest heed to what you've heard in this regard, don't let it slip, then, you know, you'll escape through the ministry of angels and you'll take advantage of the salvation, the protection, the deliverance that's available to you through their ministry. And so it's important that we understand they are a part of, an important part of, God's supernatural protection for your life and mine for anyone that has a covenant with him. And so for that reason, we were just exhorted by Scripture to take earnest heed to what we have heard. And of course, the most basic thing that we hear about angels is in the Word of God. We also then hear testimonies of people who have received ministry of angels. But first, let's be sure we're refreshed as to the things we're supposed to be taking heed to in the Word of God. So let's take a look at um, Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23, verse 20 through 23. I've got it somewhere in here. Well, uh, Exodus 23, I don't know why my Bible's giving me a little problem here. Verse 20, verse 23 says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. That is true for every one of us that have a covenant with God. He has sent an angel before you. And I personally uh, would assume and think that this is the angelic assignment every person receives when they're born into this earth. And of course, you know, if we wanted to take time we could look at Matthew 18, 10. I'll just make reference to it. You can review it later. But the subject of Matthew 18 is little children. And he says in 18, 10, you know, not to despise one of these little ones or mistreat them. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. That means when you're born as a child, you have at least two angels. It's plural here. Their angels do always behold the face of my Father in heaven. So you've got angelic assignments, at least two, perhaps more. We don't know how many more. The Word doesn't say. Uh, but you've got angelic assignments the day you're born into this earth. And I believe that this is an angel that is sent before you or angels to keep thee in the way that God has called you to go and to bring you into the place that he's prepared. And of course, you know, there have been people that said, well, I, I think we're to be led of the Holy Spirit in our dispensation. Well, you need to understand that the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit use angelic ministry to perform their purposes in the earth. Some things they're hands-on with. I think certainly the Holy Spirit directs us by the peace we feel when we've got choices and decisions to make, by the comfort that we have in a particular arena. He is the comforter. But then as far as ordering your steps, keeping you in the way, you know, I think you get a little nudge. You're not even aware of it when you get off course. That may be an extension of angelic ministry to you to begin bringing you back on the path of God's plan, the, uh, the place that he's prepared for you. And I think his preparation of these places is angelic. So certainly it's a combination 
of Holy Spirit ministry, but directly it may involve and often does involve angelic ministry because the Godhead uses them on assignment to perform their purposes in the earth. So he says, I I do this, and then in verse 21, it says, beware of him and obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Beware simply means be aware. As a matter of fact, one of the definitions given in Strong's is take heed. So we're looking at now the things that we're to give the more earnest heed to. Give more earnest heed to him and obey his voice. Remember, you're obeying the direction of God by obeying his voice. And he's always going to lead in line with the word of God. If you think God's telling you to do something and it begins taking you off the principle of God's word, you're listening to the wrong angelic ministry. Certainly demonic activity is intended to do that. But you can always check out the direction you believe you're getting by the word of God. And it says provoke him not. The word provoke actually means to incite or to stir up. You know, that implies that angels can get ticked off. They can get happy. We see they rejoice in certain instances. But we can irritate them. We can can unintentionally provoke them. And of course, I think it has to do with not responding to the direction they bring. Goes on to say, he'll not pardon your transgressions if you don't obey his voice. You know, he can't say, well, that's okay, I forgive you. That's not within his purview. Forgiveness is what God does. The angel can't do that. God's name is in him. And as you'll see in the next verse, uh, if thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, so we see that God's name is in him, he's going to speak through him, do all that God sends him to say to you. Remember, angels are messengers. In obeying his voice, you're doing what God is speaking. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Wow. And as the first part of verse 23 says, for mine angels shall go before thee. Now, these are some interesting passages to me. And it tells us, first of all, to be aware, to take heed or give heed unto his ministry to your life. Because God's often going to use him to bring his direction to you, uh, to nudge you to get back on course, to keep you on track, to keep you in the way that you're to go and to bring you unto the land that he's prepared for you. So the first thing we see angelic ministry doing is bringing direction to a believer's life. Yes, a lot of it may be the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit giving you peace with this or giving you peace with that. But as you step out in the area that you have peace, you may need a nudge or two here or there. If you begin getting off course, he is to keep you in the way. And he is often the agent God uses to prepare those open doors, make preparation for you to step into the next level of God's plan. So understand the first extension of uh, angel or angelic ministry that I think we as heirs of salvation need to be mindful of is direction. Well, let's go to Psalm 34, 7 for a moment. Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So you need to know that if you're in need of deliverance, and you must be, if that's going to be what he winds up 
uh, doing in your life. This is the second uh, area that I want you to be aware of regarding angelic ministry. We get ourselves into pickles sometimes, into, you know, into bad situations. Perhaps we open the door to the enemy in one way or another, or maybe you don't do anything wrong. But the enemy launches a, an attack in some area against your life, and you need to be delivered from a situation that uh, is not any good, clearly not God. The first awareness you need to have is that the angel of the Lord, the angels of the Lord, are encamped around you if you fear the Lord. And the word fear just means reverence. That's the sense that you use for fear, especially when you see it in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, it means to reverence, not to fear for your well-being. That's what the angel is there for, is to help you with your welfare. And when you find yourself in a hard place and you're needing deliverance, you need to be aware of the fact that there are angels right there around you. Reminds me, of Elijah's servant, Elisha's servant, you know, and they were faced with a, an army of the enemy and uh, his servant was freaking out about it and uh, just really bothered, fearful. And Elisha said, open his eyes, Lord, so he can see the reality. And the mountains were ringed with chariots of fire uh, and the angelic host. And so in the unseen realm, whether you see them or not, angels are encamped round about you if you have a covenant with God and reverence that covenant and God. And they're there for one reason, and that's to bring deliverance to your life, wherever it's needed, however it's needed. And don't ever underestimate their capacity. Their capacity isn't in question. So I mentioned last Sunday, I think, uh, I mentioned the fact that it took one angel to slay 186,000 Syrians in one night. So they're mighty beyond our ability to comprehend simply in natural terms. And they're encamped round about you when you find yourself in a hard place and need deliverance. And of course, protection might keep you from getting in that hard place. They also just provide protection from the snares of the enemy, from uh, the strategies of your foe. It says in Psalm 91, let's go there, verse 10. The word says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Boy, that's pretty broad. There shall no evil befall thee. How much ground does that cover? Just about anything you can think of that wouldn't be a blessing of God, that would be something the enemy fashioned for your detriment is evil. Could be sickness and disease, could be poverty, financial uh, collapse, famine in your land. You know, it could be, you know, the, the kinds of threats to our welfare that really touch every area of our life and our relationships. And he says, no evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague, such as the pandemic we're in right now, come nigh thy dwelling. Why? Verse 11 says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Woo! This is what you call supernatural protection. And if we learn how to properly relate to our angelic ministers and enable them to bring their ministry to bear in our life, he says no evil will befall you. Didn't say it wasn't out there, but it's not gonna befall you. And he said no plague. Whether it's the coronavirus or anything else you can think of, 
is gonna come nigh your dwelling. And he says, for he's given his angels charge over thee. My goodness, I mean, you ought to be getting stirred up right now and excited about what your covenant provides for you. If you're sitting out there listening to this streaming and you're saying, oh, that's that, that's that religious junk. No, this is not religious and it's not junk. It is a revelation of the unseen realm. You can't see life, you can't see death, you can't see heaven, you can't see hell. You can't see God, you can't see the devil, angels, or demons. So you're gonna have to take it by faith if you're gonna tap in to the truth that inhabits the unseen realm. I just, you know, I get frustrated. I used to look at my own tendencies to intellectualize everything. And if I couldn't see it, touch it, taste it, and feel it, then as far as I was concerned, at an early stage of my life, during the height of my ignorance, you know, uh, if I couldn't lay hold on it in this natural arena, it wasn't real. But I soon learned there are a lot of realities that transcend send this temporal arena we live in. And the only way I can access truth about that realm is by the Word of God. And the Word is peppered with direction and information about angels and their ministry for the heirs of salvation. This is a great one in Psalm 91. He's giving his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, just as we read in Exodus 23. Only it goes a little further and says, they're there to keep any evil from befalling you, any plague from coming nigh your dwelling, to bear you up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now, this is the one I use every time I go flying. Been flying all of my life, 54 years now, and, you know, a lot of it was in some testy situations in the military, in Vietnam, uh, and then, you know, in other uh, times of my life, there are always things that, uh, represent potential problems or difficulties or challenges. Whether it's weather, maintenance, unexpected things do happen. And so before I'd go flying, I would always, in relationship to this verse, and I guess I used it for my flying because it says, you know, uh, they shall bear thee up. That's where you want to be in an airplane. <clears throat> you want to be up. You don't want any, uh, you know, dashing yourself against the ground. And so I referred to this and I would commission my angels to go before, behind, above, and beneath. That there'd be no occasion of the enemy that would take me in this trip or in that flight. And I'd do it. Every flight, always have, since I started flying. And I, you know, I got... Uh, Four years ago, the FAA uh, gave me the Wright Brothers Master Pilots Award. An FAA official came in here and did it in church. To my surprise, one Sunday, you may have been here for that service. And that's 50 years of accident-free flying. Not because I'm uh, the best pilot who ever lived, but I think I'm close. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, it's because of this because there's a supernatural protection you can invoke if you understand the importance of angelic ministry. And I would suggest you use this with regularity, you know, in your daily life. Take heed on a daily basis to their available ministry to your life. And, and uh, as it regards direction, Deliverance or protection as we've seen in each of these verses. And I believe that you'll experience, even though you encounter evil, fills the world. Even though the enemy may devise a strategy against you, it's not gonna prosper because he's given his angels charge over you. And you say, okay, well, how do I get my angels to work? You know, there are a lot of times, you know, that. Evil has touched my life. Cursing and death has been a problem. 
has touched me. So if these, you know, are my angels sleeping on the job? Uh, what's not working here? Because there have been times that if I've got angels in camp round about me, if, my, if I've been assigned angels when I was born into this earth, if, if, you know, he's given his angels charge over me, then why do I have these problems? Well, I think it's important that we understand how we put them to work. So go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. I've already talked a little bit about that. Uh, their power and their capability in the natural temporal world we live in really can't be measured. Their strength, their physical capacity is something that uh, truly is awesome. And he says that excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. They hearken unto the voice of God's word. God's word doesn't have a voice unless you put it in your mouth. And so when you commission your angels by speaking the word of God, the will of God, he goes on to say in verse 21, Bless you, the Lord, all ye his host, ye ministers of his, talking about the angels, that do his pleasure. And so the things that it pleasures God to do in your life, that's a good study to make sometime. It says that he, you know, takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So you can rest assured that your prosperity, whether it be soulish, or whether it be material and financial, prosperity, increase in success in any arena of life is part of the angelic assignment on your behalf because they do his pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. Follow us on social media to receive daily encouragement and ministry news. And also be sure to come back again soon for our next broadcast. Have a great week and as always remember, God wants you to be a winner in every area of life.